Hey everybody, I really need you to stay till the end because I'm going to tell you step by step how I obtained Actually, my landlord $8, obtained it. <laughs> in a rental assistance for last year. Now, I just want to say that that program is closed. Here comes my dog, gonna make a little bit of noise. <laughs> that program is closed, but there is going to be another program opening up soon and that's why i wanted to put out this video so that people can start getting ready for that first thing i want to do is show you how i found the portal here he is <laughs> the portal is not readily available anywhere you have to go digging for it and i actually saw on a matthew lesko video and side note, I got to talk to Matthew Lesko, and he is just as awesome as he seems. Like, he was just so happy that I was able to get the assistance that I needed, and it's just amazing how passionate he is about helping people. I really appreciate everything that I've learned from him thus far, and I can't wait to learn more. So... The way that I found the portal, I saw on one of his videos that I should go to the National Low Income Housing Coalition website, which is nlihc.org. I'll put all these links in the description as well to make it easier for you guys, but I want to actually show you what it looks like. So you're going to go to the website and you're going to click on learn more, then click on the three lines in the top corner housing needs by state and you're going to pick your state and then you're going to click the state level partners every state it varies i actually checked for a couple people some people only had one person some people had like three or four people some people had like 10 people so what i did was i sent every single one of them a phone call and voice all the email. people in my state and i'm gonna show you what the email i sent looked like right here so you can see what I sent them. For Delaware, there was only two people, so I contacted both of them. I did get an automated reply from Rachel telling me to contact Sarah if it was an emergency. And, Sarah, and then Sarah so got back to me with so much and info. Her email was super informative. First, it told me where the portal was, but then it told me all my other options. I think it's really important that if anyone needs rental assistance, that they go do this right now because even if the covid rental assistance isn't open there's really a good chance that someone in the national low-income housing organization is going to be able to help you get some rental assistance in the meantime because even though it took a little while all the people i did email eventually got back to me and one person got back to me and was like oh there's no more funds but i was like <laughs> i already applied <laughs> but he gave me all these other options you know like call your state representative he needs to know about your situation and call this church and they should be able to help you. If you're in a bind, I definitely recommend to find these state level partners in your state from the National Low Income Housing Coalition. I'm just telling you what I did. So she sent me to the portal, which was right here. And this is what the portal looks like. So the first thing was the tenant application form. Rental assistance is limited to income eligible households whose current annual income does not exceed 80% of the area medium income for their household size as determined by the Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD. Assistance is limited to Delaware residents who have lost employment or income either permanently or temporarily due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The purpose of this form is to collect and verify information about the household's income and must be submitted via the DE HAP application portal as part of the DE HAP application. It's so important to follow all of their rules like to T. So for your household information, I ask you like your address, 
and um, your household member. I consider myself head of household. I'm the only person. So it was just me, head of household. And it said, pre-March 1st annual household income. Current or post-COVID reduced annual household income. Post-COVID, I, I wasn't making anything until I started being able to um, get PUA. And then even then, like, you know, the $600 ran out. And, I, and at the time of this application, I was actually only getting $133 a week. Yeah, less than $550 a month. Documentation of COVID-19 related impact on employment or income must be provided. Examples of acceptance documents include notice of layoff, furlough, or reduced work from employer, employer verification form, must be signed by employer and indicated COVID-19 related impact, self-employment verification form, applicable only if tenant is self is self-employed this is the one that i chose because i was self-employed documentation of receipt of unemployment benefits such as state of monetary documentation letter or evidence of deposits must include tenant name or identifying information pre and post covid pay stub showing the reduced hours and i also included that I showed how before COVID started, I was making about 2000 sometimes even $5,000 a month to maybe making 200 on a good month. I waited till, I definitely wait till the last minute. This was due December 31st. And I wait till December 30th to get this done. Instead of submitting a full lease, I submitted like receipts of payments that I had made. I had submitted pieces of a lease. I submitted and submit her check. I just submitted the number and routing number. And I also didn't submit the W9 for her, which I will also discuss with you about in a little bit. All right, now let me go get the next form. The self-employment verification form. Okay, now this is what I had to fill out because I was self-employed. It asked me tenant information, self-employment information, my business name, which I don't really talk about. I don't really want to talk about right now what my, my business was. Um, but I did have a business. Prior income was about 2500 per month. My current income was down to $500 a month at the time of um, filling this out tenant signature I signed it and that was it that was all I had to do for the self-employment as well as include how the pandemic had affected my hours so for the company that I was an independent contractor and also self-employed but I was also independent contracting for a company and this company had actually kept track of all the money that I had made with them so I was able to show them very clearly how COVID-19 had affected my ability to make money at my job. So that is the self-employed verification W-9 form is for the IRS so they can show that they paid this money to someone. Now, the W-9 form also helps whoever your landlord is because now your landlord has proof that he actually received this money but like there's so many tax write-offs that the landlords can get that you shouldn't be having to give the government back any of this money i had submitted it without the full lease without the voided check and without the w-9 and without the voided check and without the w-9 they sent me an email about a month later saying that my Application wasn't complete, and I had 15 days to complete it. And I contacted the Delaware Housing Assistance Program, and I asked them, like, is there anything else you can take besides the voided check? And they said, even just, like, a PDF, the accounting number and routing number on it is totally good enough. And I was like, oh, okay, that's great. Like, I can definitely make that. So um, I made one of those up. Of course, I ran this all by my landlord because my landlord was the one who ultimately had to apply. 
but I wanted to make it as easy on her as possible. We had agreed at $1,000 a month that I was going to pay her. I did have some receipts. Even though they didn't ask me for receipts, I submitted them anyway. I feel like the more you can submit, the better, the better your chances are. I submitted this in um, the end of December. And before February was over, there was $8,000 in my landlord's account. So that's how I got $8,000 in rental assistance for 2020 through the CARES Act.